Darby Allen is one of AEW's biggest and brightest homegrown stars and he has distinguished himself from everybody in AEW through his unique and enigmatic character and he has captivated audiences through his unconventional and risky wrestling style. However, before AEW, Darby Allen was unknown on a mainstream wrestling level and when he was announced for a match against the Red Hot Cody Rhodes, who was coming off his classic match against Dustin at Double or Nothing 2019, everybody just kind of assumed that he was the grown up version of this kid. Just got an awesome face paint job, what do you think? I like turtles. All right. But little did everybody know of the nuances and subtleties of Darby Allen's character that made him a star. And this was shown in the vignette that was released in the build up to his match versus Cody Rhodes. And in this vignette, he told the story of how his drunken uncle hopped behind the wheel and picked him up when he was five years old. And him and his uncle got into a car crash, which took his uncle's life and Darby was the sole survivor. Darby Allen faced death that day. And he has expressed that this is why he paints half of his face. It's because he feels like half of him is dead and half of him is alive. Alive. Darby Allen is suffering from survivor's guilt and he has incorporated that into his character in pro wrestling. And in this veneer, he also revealed that he got relentless and nothing's over to you underground tattooed on him because of his drive to succeed. And in this veneer, he also talked about his affinity for pain that he's gotten from skateboarding that has crossed over into pro wrestling. And he expressed that he does all of these crazy stunts because he wants the audience to feel his pain. This vignette touched a lot of people and it caused people to see how much of an interesting and intriguing persona Darby Allen has. And so the stage was set at Fighter Fest 2019, the relatively unknown talent Darby Allen versus the red hot EVP Cody Rhodes. And this was the same match that Darby Allen took the world famous apron bump. Oh no! <laughs> And this match told a compelling story of Cody being cocky and giving Darby Allen the beats, and Darby Allen taking the beating and not giving up, as it went to a 20 minute time limit draw. And at the beginning of the match, the crowd was mainly chanting for Cody Rhodes, but by the end of the match, the crowd was chanting for Darby Allen. And remember everything that I'm saying about Darby Allen's feud with Cody Rhodes, because it stretches on for a while. And by the way, hit that like button if you haven't. But anyway, this match seemingly made Darby Allen a star overnight. But the craziest thing is, is that it took Darby Allen years and years of grinding and being relentless to become an overnight success. In the years leading up to AEW, Darby Allen wrestled on the independent circuit and he was living on the razor edge as he revealed that he experienced homelessness for a few months while he was living in his car. Nothing has ever come easy to Darby Allen and on the independent circuit, he distinguished himself from everybody by cultivating his daredevil like wrestling style. And on the independent, when he was wrestling Joey Janela, he took a bump onto concrete which caused his brain to swell and bleed, which is a legit fate injury that could have killed Darby Allen. But this is indicative of how far Darby Allen is willing to go for the sake of pro wrestling. And Darby Allen brought his exhibitionist style of wrestling to AEW. Darby Allen even rejected WWE because he felt that he wouldn't be able to be his authentic self. And his authentic self is him posting these eerie vignettes of him doing these crazy stunts like jumping off of high places and many many other things. Darby Allen's stuntman-esque persona and moveset really allured a lot of people. And at AEW All Out 2019, this was on display further in his Cracker Barrel match with Jimmy Havoc and Joey Janela, in which he took this sick bump. Darby Allen is quite literally a mad man. And then after this match, Darby Allen won a number one contendership match against Jimmy Havoc, in which he earned himself a shot at Chris Jericho's AEW's World Heavyweight Championship. And this match between Chris Jericho and Darby Allen was a Philadelphia street fight, and it was mind blowing, and it further highlighted Darby's knack to perform dangerous moves, as his hands were tied behind his back for a good portion of the match. But he still managed to pull off so many acrobatic feats that had the potential to really end badly. Chris Jericho got the win, but this match solidified that Darby Allen was able to hang with the very best in the world. And after this match with Chris Jericho, Darby Allen faced off against John Moxley. And this match was awesome as John Moxley gave Darby Allen a paradigm ship off the top rope. And this spot left everybody watching like this. What the hell? Watching this in real time, you really thought that Darby Allen broke his freaking neck. But this just again showed how far Darby Allen was willing to go for the sake of pro wrestling. And there's more to the story with John Moxley down the road, so stick around for that. After this match with John Moxley, Cody Rhodes experienced some problems with the Butcher and the Blade. And Darby Allen told Cody he'd help him take care of the Butcher and the Blade on the condition that he gets a rematch against Cody. Cody and Darby surprisingly meshed well together as a tag team, and this led them to defeat the Butcher and the Blade, which set up Darby and Cody's rematch at AEW's first show of 2020. And in Darby and Cody's second bout, Darby gave Cody a run for his money, and he even corrected the fail 
failed coffin drop to the apron in this match. Cody defeated Darby with the help of his new coach on Anderson who told Cody Rhodes to put his legs up when Darby Allen was going for a coffin drop. And Darby Allen did a coffin drop straight onto Cody Rhodes knees and this caused Cody Rhodes to roll up Darby Allen for the 1-2-3. But he only beat him by the skin of his teeth. Even though at this point Darby Allen had taken a few major losses in AEW, his stock was clearly rising as he was gaining more and more momentum every single time he stepped out. Darby Allen then entered into a little feud with Sammy Guevara of the Inner Circle and in a post-match beatdown after a six-man tag, Sammy Guevara grabbed Darby's skateboard and put the edge of Darby's skateboard onto Darby's throat and rammed Darby into the ring. And this caused Darby Allen to be out of action for three weeks and when he returned, he set up a match at AEW's Revolution 2020. Their match at AEW's Revolution was a great match, even though it was a very short match with Darby picking up the win, but it showed that Darby and Sammy are future players for AEW. At this point, Darby Allen was on an upward trajectory and nothing could stop the snowball of momentum that he'd accumulated. That is until the pandemic hit. The pandemic managed to take some momentum out of Darby Allen's hot streak as the pandemic did with every other wrestler. And the first few episodes of AEW Dynamite in the pandemic were very weird as the true magic of pro wrestling was hard to come by with no crowd. And even though Darby Allen was featured on these early pandemic episodes, the show was still suffering. And in response to this, AEW announced the eight man tournament to crown the inaugural TNT champion. And this was the first truly interesting thing to happen on Dynamite since the pandemic Began. And Darby Allen was a part of it, of which he defeated Sammy Guevara again in the first round bracket match. But then he faced a familiar foe in the form of Cody Rhodes in the second round. And in their third bout, Cody Rhodes just beat Darby Allen as Darby Allen had Cody Rhodes beat when he landed a coffin drop on Cody. But then Cody rolled his shoulder up and pinned Darby Allen for the 1 2 3. This match highlighted that Cody Rhodes had always beat Darby by outsmarting him, and he has never pinned him in a dominant and definitive manner. This match showed that Darby was inching close closer and closer and little by little to beating Cody Rhodes and it was only a matter of time before Darby would get that W over Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes then went on to win the TNT Championship and before AEW's double or nothing, Darby Allen's feud with Taz started as Darby rejected Taz's advice. And at AEW's double or nothing 2020, Darby Allen participated in a casino ladder match in which the winner would receive an AEW world title shot, in which Brian Cage participated in and won the ladder match. But what was interesting is that Brian Cage was accompanied by Taz and this set off their feud even more. And after this match, Darby Allen teamed up with John Moxley to defeat Brian Cage and Ricky Starks in a match. And in this match, Darby Allen shredded Ricky Starks back. Ouch. That's gonna leave a mark. And at this point, John Moxley was the AEW World Champion. And Darby Allen challenged John Moxley for the AEW World Championship. And I talked about Darby's second attempt at the AEW World title in my story so far video on John Moxley. So you should check that out if you haven't. But basically, this match was a storytelling masterpiece. And the story in this match was Darby Allen refusing to back down, even in the face of a madman like John Moxley. And Moxley was reluctant to teach the brash and naive Darby a lesson because he saw a lot of his younger self in Darby. But Moxley was forced to teach Darby a lesson and after Moxley beat Darby he held Darby in his hands and this was such a powerful scene and in the words of MJF it was yeah, si magnifique. And after this match, Darby Allen challenged Cody Rhodes for the TNT Championship at AEW's Full Gear 2020. And this was the ultimate culmination of their feud as Cody Rhodes was coming off just winning the TNT Championship back from Mr. Brody Lee. And this was the fourth match between the two and there was so much pressure on Darby Allen to win this match because if he lost, this would have been his third loss to Cody Rhodes in a row. If Darby Allen had lost this match to Cody Rhodes, it would solidify Cody Rhodes as the game, if you know what I mean. It's all about the game, and how you play it, all about control, and if you can take it, all about your death. But fortunately, Darby Allen picked up the win via roll up and him winning the TNT Championship was such a beautiful sight to see as it was the perfect time to pull the trigger on Darby Allen as he deserved it so much and especially to see him win it from Cody Rhodes was very gratifying. Credit to AEW because this storyline stretched for almost 18 months and it ended just the way it should have. But Darby Allen's TNT title run started off 
quite badly as he was pinned clean by Brian Cage the following week in a tag match. But the following week after Cody and Darby got their revenge on Team Taz, something huge happened. As Will Hobbs of Team Taz was about to hit Cody over the head with the FTW title, the lights went out and the icon Sting walked out. Sting was AEW and he proceeded to stoically stare Darby in the eyes and this was such a compelling image considering the fact that they both have many similarities, especially with their face paint. Sting and Darby then decided to team up and this partnership between Darby Allen and Sting was a match made in heaven as Sting was literally the face of TNT once upon a time and Darby was literally the face of TNT in that current moment as the TNT champion. This pairing wasn't only aesthetically pleasing but they also complemented each other greatly as they were both loners and both of their attitudes and demeanors were alike. Sting was kind of like the delinquent uncle to the delinquent kid and Sting and Darby Allen continued to feud against Team Taz and one week Team Taz was in a car and they even dragged Darby Allen in a body bag and this feud culminated in a tag team street fight at AEW's Revolution 2021. This was Sting's first match back in almost six years, albeit cinematic, but this match was great and had many memorable moments and spots as Sting picked up the win for him and Darby. Darby Allen then went on one hell of a run with the TNT title as he defended the belt against the likes of Brian Cage, Joey Nutella, Scorpio Sky, John Silver, JD Drake, Matt Hardy, The Butcher, Jungle Boy and Ten and many of these matches main evented AEW Dynamite and this just showed how much trust and faith AEW management had in Darby as he was getting pushed very consistently and was drawing very well in the ratings. Darby Allen's next challenger was then Miro and this match was billed as the man who doesn't mind dying versus the man who doesn't mind killing him and unfortunately Darby Allen lost the TNT title to Miro but Darby Allen's run with the TNT title further solidified him as a main event talent and one of AEW's biggest prospects. During Darby's amazing TNT title run, him and Sting feuded with Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky and this feud was really good as there was a lot of history going into this feud as Ethan Page legit fractured Darby Allen's skull on the independence which again just like his other head injury is a legit fatal injury that could have killed Darby Allen. Darby Allen is kind of like a cat he must have nine lives because you just can't kill him. I don't sleep because my head's on fire I hate creeps and I hate and their story from the independence was further elaborated as Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky threw Darby Allen off a flight of stairs which caused him a shoulder injury that caused him to be injured in his match with Miro. So it's fair to say that things got personal in this feud and it culminated at AEW's Double or Nothing 2021 and this was Sting's first in-ring match since 2015 and this match was excellent but to be completely honest even though Darby Allen was amazing in this match Sting was the star of the show as Sting showed the crowd that he's definitely still got it. Him and Darby picked up the win and Darby Allen tied his loose ends with Ethan Page in a coffin match in which Darby Allen won in a spectacular fashion. Sting and Darby then entered into a brief feud with the former NXT talents 2.0 and Daniel Garcia and in Sting and Darby's match with 2.0, Darby Allen did one of his trademark tope suicidas. Darby Allen is almost like Rolf from The Simpsons. <laughs> I'm a brick. And then from there Darby Allen mentioned the best in the world. And through the power of those words, 10,000 plus seats were sold to the United Center in Chicago and the cult of personality CM Punk debuted to an electrifying ovation. And the first person CM Punk called out was Darby Allen. And the fact that Darby Allen was chosen to be the very first person CM Punk fused with speaks volumes of how much faith AEW puts in Darby Allen. Darby Allen said that when he was 15 years old, CM Punk was his favorite wrestler. And CM Punk echoed this by saying that if he was 15 years old, Darby Allen would be his favorite wrestler. Even though CM Punk and Darby Allen are aesthetically different, they are very similar in many ways, as they are both straight edge, meaning they don't drink or do any drugs, and they are both pariahs and mavericks in their own right. And this set up their match perfectly for AEW's All Out 2021, and this was CM Punk's first match after seven long years out of wrestling. And this was an excellent match, and even though Darby lost, it took Darby's name value to the next level as his name soared to new heights, as a lot of returners to wrestling found out who Darby Allen was. After his match, Darby Allen started feuding with MJF, and his storyline with MJF was the classic story of a bully talking trash and belittling the outcast, and this feud was short but really good, and it culminated at AEW's Full Gear 2021, where MJF picked up the win over Darby in an amazing match. And some people even say that it was the match of the night for AEW Full Gear 2021. This match is the beginning of the storyline to MJF versus Darby, as this feud has the potential to go on for years and years into the future. 
And that's where we are in the story so far of Darby Allen. Darby has come a long way in AEW, from a relatively unknown talent to one of the biggest stars in AEW, and he has made an emotional connection with fans, especially the younger generation, as it's not uncommon to see little Darbys running around at AEW shows. Darby Allen has become a sort of symbol for being yourself and loving yourself just the way you are, and he makes it okay to be an outcast. It doesn't matter if you're weird or if you like this or like that, what matters is that you're you and you shouldn't change for anyone. He has become a beacon in many people's hearts to never ever give up because nothing's over until you're under the ground. And in this way, he's a perfect underdog and one day he'll for sure be AEW World Champion. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. But anyway, goodbye, you jobbers.